All right, guys, it's Charlie Tango 1994 back with another YouTube video. SSB stands for single sideband, but in fact, it isn't really a band at all. SSB is more effectively described as a mode similar to AM or FM. SSB is an extremely reliable method of capturing your voice onto a radio wave as well as the transmission of such a radio wave. The procedure of applying a voice to a radio wave is referred to as modulation. To modulate a radio wave is to include information to it in order that it can be received. Most people will recognise one of the more typical types of modulation, AM, amplitude modulation, and also FM, frequency modulation, providing the AM and also FM bands their usual name. You will possibly have made use of FM or AM yourself through children's walkie-talkies or remote-controlled toys. When in AM mode, your voice modulates is superimposed on a carrier wave at a specific frequency by your transceiver, as well as being transmitted across the airwaves. The carrier wave is used to carry the audio signal to an AM receiver, where it is received, as well as converted back to an audio signal, permitting the voice message sent to be understood. In an AM modulated radio signal, the carrier wave is constantly transmitted. Because of the way an AM signal is generated by the transmitter, two similar modulating signals are attached to the carrier wave, and it is these that are referred to as the sidebands. Any type of audio that you hear on AM radio is coming from both sidebands. Whenever the radio transmitter you are tuned to is not transmitting any form of sound, you can still hear something and also register a reading on your SWAR meter. These two modulating sidebands lay on each side of the carrier wave, one just above it and one just below. If you're new to this channel and would like to see more CB related videos, feel free to hit the subscribe button below and watch out for new videos uploaded every Wednesday. If you enjoy my videos, don't forget to hit the like button or leave me a note in the comments section. Also, if you're new to CB radio, watch this video through to the end to find out more about the free gift I offer to all of my subscribers. The audio sidebands that form an AM broadcast signal are quite important. They offer the information or audio intended for the receiving station. AM radios have been used for many years, but it was more recently discovered an AM signal can be modified to produce better results. A range of differing methods were developed, making use of the sidebands with no carrier signal by using different circuits in the transceiver. This enabled the modulation to remain without the need for a carrier wave. This is referred to as a dual sideband, DSP, and was normally used in the really early experiments because it was a great deal simpler to filter out just the carrier than to filter out the carrier wave as well as one of the sidebands. In later advancements, it became feasible to filter out the carrier and either of the sidebands, providing us single sideband. Radio devices with the necessary circuits and filtering systems are able to receive transmissions that may be either lower sideband or upper sideband. When you hear an SSB signal, the voices are modified and might be very slightly muffled and distorted and may sound Donald Duck-like. Given that you still need a carrier to demodulate a signal, you need an SSB radio in order to hear these transmissions. This is accomplished in an SSB receiver by circuits that insert a very low level carrier wave back into the receiver with the lower or upper sideband signal. And the sound that was transmitted is restored in the receiver with practically identical recreation of the original audio. The SSB receiver has to be carefully tuned to make the voices sound normal. If you change the tuning of the radio, tuning away from one of the transmitter frequencies, the voices will be higher or lower pitched, creating that Donald Duck sound. With practice, it becomes easier to tweak the radio until the voice seems more natural. Your receiver must be in the identical mode as the transmitted signal, or this method does not work. Your receiver must be in USB mode and vice versa if the transmitter of the other station is in USB mode. Since the integrity of the SSB voice transmission has been modified to some degree through the different filters in the procedure, normally only the most essential parts or characteristics of the voice frequencies are allowed through. And this creates the absence of fidelity to the transmission and just the portions of the voice characteristics remain, which is the only thing that is required in the first place. It is a communications mode not wideband high frequency commercial broadcast FM radio after all. The information contained in the typical human voice required 
to comprehend the voice is included in around the 3000 hertz of the human hearing range. Frequencies of the human voice outside of this specific range are not required for communication purposes and are filtered out in the modulation process. The average bandwidth of a SSB signal is about 3000 hertz wide, with all of the voice characteristics needed within that range to be understandable on the carrier. When producing that AM signal we were talking about, the end result is that approximately half of the transmitter power is wasted on the carrier and the rest of the power is diverted between the two sidebands. As a result, the actual audio output from a 1000 watt AM transmitter, which equates to 500 watts of carrier plus 250 watts of each sideband, this would be the same as a 250 watt sideband transmitter in its effectiveness. As just one sideband is transmitted and received, the receiver's required bandwidth is reduced by one half, effectively decreasing the needed power by the transmitter an additional 50%. In theory, the radio has now doubled from 4 to 1 to become 8 to 1. The reason for the efficiency of SSB is that all of the power used to produce both sidebands and the carrier are now used in only one sideband at the transmitter. And when you account for the receiver re-adding only a very, very tiny portion of that power back into the equation, you are increasing the efficiency about 8 times better than a standard AM transmitter. This is one reason why long distances can be covered effectively with SSB using much less power than AM. When you are in either sideband mode, listening to the background noise and all of a sudden you hear a tone in the background, you are listening to the carrier. That is being reinserted into your receiver, beating against the carrier of another station that is broadcasting no information on his carrier. And this creates a different frequency. If he is slightly off the frequency you are tuned to, if you tune your receiver to precisely his broadcast frequency, the tone will go away because the variation in frequency between your receiver and his transmit frequency are so near that you cannot hear the low audio frequency. When you key your mic and are in SSB mode, look at your watt meter and you'll see no power being output. When using the sideband mode, so no carrier will be registered on the meter, remember that there is no carrier produced in the transmitter. If you scrape your finger across the face of the mic or talk into it, you will then see the meter register the modulation. The moment you modulate the transmitter with your voice, you will observe that the meter demonstrates that now you have output. When they key their mic with no modulation, many new radio users to SSB seem to forget that they are not transmitting a carrier. Remember that when checking SWR. You must have your transmitter in the AM or FM mode with the transmitter keyed up in order for the SWA meter to detect the signal. You cannot check SWA in any SSB mode. Now that you've found out more about SSB functions, simply remember that the SSB mode of transmission is the prevalent mode of transmission used by the majority of Radio Ham to efficiently and effectively work the world. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. And as a thank you to you, particularly if you're new to CB Radio or returning to it after many years, I've put together a free information series called The Beginner's Guide to CB Radio, which I'm sharing with all of my subscribers. To find out more, click the link in the top right corner now.